If you don't like chickpeas, maybe just watch a different video. Today we are going to be making three different chickpea recipes, chickpea salad, chickpea curry, and hummus. I almost said chickpea hummus. That would have been weird. Hummus. Let's jump right into our first recipe, which is going to be our curry. You can screenshot this picture right here with if you are on your phone. If you're not, you can just go ahead and write down the ingredients that I have right here, and we will get started. The first thing I do when making any Thai-style curries is I'm going to reduce my coconut milk. All this simply means is adding it to a pan, turning it to about medium heat and letting it boil or simmer until it's about half of its original volume. While my coconut milk was reducing, I went ahead and started prepping my veggies. So today I'm adding onions, carrot, potato, cauliflower. If you notice, I don't have anything green in this recipe. And the reason for this is because I love food to be very visually appealing. And we are making a red curry. Red curry sometimes can have a little bit of an orangey tint to it. So I felt like the carrots were perfect to go with this. But if I would have added green into this, it really would have clashed and maybe made our curry maybe not as vibrant as I would like it to be. Because I want it to be super ready orangey. So anyway, these are the vegetables I chose to use. When cutting them up, just make sure that you have somewhat uniform sizes. That way they cook at about the same rate and you don't have one thing getting mushy before the other. Also, I did want to mention while your coconut milk is reducing, be sure to keep a good eye on it because it does have a tendency to boil over. It's going to rise a lot as it's simmering, but just make sure that it doesn't boil over. So I did end up having to turn mine down a little bit, but just let it keep going until it's reduced about by, I would say about by half. So years ago, I was watching another YouTuber and she actually did this method of reducing your coconut milk to about half of what it was and then adding in all of your veggies so you're not sauteing them in oil first. And this has turned out to be the tastiest curry that I've ever made. I really love this method and it is a great way to remove oil because this is, I mean, obviously there's the natural oils that are in the coconut milk in here, but you're not adding any extra oil. So I love this method, especially if you're trying to reduce oil. My coconut milk has reduced, now let's move on to the next step. Once our coconut milk has reduced for, I would say about 10 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and add in our curry paste. I love this brand by Thai Kitchen. It is my favorite. They have a green curry as well, but the red is definitely my favorite. So we will add this directly to our coconut milk and then we're gonna let that simmer away again and you're gonna let it come back up to a boil. And then at this point, then we're gonna go ahead and get ready to start adding in all of our vegetables. Little side note here, make sure you reserve the liquid in your garbanzo beans because this is actually known as aquafaba and you can use this as an egg white replacement. Look it up, it's crazy. If you guys would like to see some recipes using aquafaba, just comment below and let me know and I might be able to throw that together for you guys. So now our curry paste and coconut milk is at a rapid boil and we are going to start adding in vegetables. But at this point, when I'm looking at the vegetables that I have, I have two different root vegetables. I have carrots and potatoes. These are definitely going to take longer than my cauliflower and my onions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pop these in first and I'm going to let them simmer for about maybe just five minutes, not too, too much longer. So I'll just set a timer to make sure I don't forget and I will let these go for about five minutes before we add the rest of our vegetables. Vegetables. Now that our five minutes is up, we will go ahead and add in our remaining ingredients. I did also add some tan tofu to this recipe. The difference between tan tofu and just regular tofu is that this tofu has already been pressed, so a lot of the liquid has been removed, and then it's been pre-fried on each side. That way it's ready to add to any recipe. Then I also added in my cauliflower, onion. I added in a half a can of bamboo shoots. This is optional as well and then our garbanzo beans. At this point, your base is not gonna completely cover your vegetables, so you're gonna wanna add a little bit of water and then kinda just push your vegetables down. The vegetables will start, when they start releasing their own liquid, they're going to definitely be below your mixture, so don't add too much water initially. Just add a little bit, kinda move everything around, maybe cover it for a little while and see how they're cooking down and then add as you go. If you add too much water right off the bat, you're really going to reduce the flavors and with a curry, you really want some robust flavors from all the different spices and herbs. So 
definitely don't add too much water. Also, I did want to mention too that during this process, you can go ahead and add in your cubes of palm sugar. I added in three, but if you don't have palm sugar, you could add in just like three tablespoons of coconut sugar or brown sugar. Once all your vegetables are added, all you're gonna do is let this cook till your vegetables are almost tender, but not quite completely tender. If you let them get completely tender, as your curry continues to cool, they'll just get too soft. So once that was done, I went ahead and started a pot of rice. And when I cook rice, I actually do a one-to-one -one ratio. So this was two cups of rice and two cups of water. And this creates a more chewy grain, much more delicious. So you don't have overcooked rice. And now I will, am going to go ahead and get started on my, what was supposed to be a chickpea salad, but I actually did not have another can of chickpeas. So this is going to be a navy bean salad, but just pretend that it's actually garbanzo beans to go with my title today. So here we go. So this salad is pretty simple, but one thing I did want to actually point out to you guys is the fact that I am removing the seeds from the cucumber. The only reason why I am doing this is because I am making a double batch because I planned on having this accessible for the next couple of days and I'm leaving it in the refrigerator. If I wasn't to remove the seeds, because the seeds do contain most of the moisture within a cucumber, this would kind of just turn into a soup salad <laughs> and I really just did not want that to happen so I'm just going to remove the majority of the seeds from this cucumber to help it be able to sit longer. Find something to believe Because I'm running wild I ain't running free Still got a lot of shit left to see I'm Stuck in this town And the town's stuck in me Always trying to find another reason to leave But we sit at home All alone Hoping one day I'll never be known Cause I'm stuck on the bottom Trying to feel on top Wishing everything would just come to a stop The next thing that we're gonna make is a quick chickpea hummus. And I wanted to sh like take you guys through this step by step because I wanted you to see how quick and easy it is. Obviously buying store-bought hummus can be faster, but there's also gonna be added oils as well as sometimes added preservatives and a lot more sodium. So I wanted to show you really quickly how to just make hummus. One of the reasons why they add oils to hummuses is because it, one creates like this mouthfeel but it also keeps the mixture really moist but all we're gonna do is we're gonna reserve the the liquids from out of the chickpeas and we'll add these instead of adding extra oil I'm just literally gonna add everything straight to the blender so I have one can of chickpeas I'm also just gonna add in two bell peppers these are just sweet bell peppers and It's my family's hummus, so don't judge me for that. Um, okay. Anyway, I'm gonna add in two bell peppers. This is just gonna add like an underlying flavor. Then I'm gonna add lemon juice. This is a staple to tahini. Um, not tahini. Hummus. Hummus always has like that tangy acidity. You could use lemon or you could just add vinegar or I, my other inspiration for this recipe is actually pickle juice so this is about to get crazy so another basic thing that is in tahini i meant oh my god i keep saying this another thing that is in hummus is tahini paste hold on but i have a jar of this ranch dressing it is a tahini based ranch so technically it just has like all the seasonings that are in ranch like dill um, onion powder, garlic powder, all this kind of stuff. Hi, baby. So I'm just gonna actually add this instead of just plain tahini base paste. So it's gonna be kind of like a ranch hummus. So we'll see how that turns out. This idea just came to me because I had this left over in my fridge from last week's recipe. If you have not already watched that, that'll be linked in the iCard, and you'll actually see the full recipe for this ranch tahini dressing. Otherwise, just use plain tahini. 
So now I'm gonna add a little bit more garlic powder and I'm gonna add some salt and a little bit of pepper. Then all we're gonna do is blend this and I will add a little bit of the reserved liquid from the actual chickpeas as needed. I don't wanna add a lot because I'd rather this be like really thick and creamy, but I will add it if, if my blender like gets stuck and it's not pulling all the way through. So that is going to be our hummus. All right, so I did not have to actually end up adding any um, of the reserved juices because I added probably for the one can of garbanzo beans, I added probably about a quarter of a cup of my tahini ranch and this might be my favorite hummus that I ever made. Yeah. This is my favorite hummus that I've ever made. For sure. I did just say add regular tahini if you have it, but no, no honey. Go make the ranch and then add that. Make the ranch and make the salads one day, like make a double recipe, make the salads one day, make something else with it. And then whenever you have leftovers, throw it in this. It is so delicious. Everything is finished and I just sat down to try it. I actually have not tried the curry yet. I tried the hummus while I was cooking it and I actually had to have a little bowl of the salad already which was delicious but I haven't tried the curry yet. Mm. So good. It could use a little bit more sugar, but there, something about like this style, Thai people have figured it out. It's sweet and salty. The coconut adds a ni nice level of like fat to it. It's, this is really good. These bamboo shoots are like crunchy. The, the tofu is like chewy. I'm not sure if you watched my video on salads. And I kind of go into like the aspects of what, what makes a salad good. And I talk about texture and the different tastes. Um, here's a little secret. That's for all food, not just salads. <laughs> um, but I just presented it that way. So anyway, if you have not tried any kind of like Thai recipes, this would be a great start because the curry paste is already Pretty much done for you so all you're adding like if you don't really understand Thai cuisine like the flavor, it's hard to really understand like their spices and stuff like that so I would recommend a curry like this because you can get like the curry paste and it's already ready and all you're adding is in your vegetables and stuff like that so I almost forgot to mention on the curry at the end I squeeze over a little bit of lemon or lime and it adds that nice level of acidity that cuts through all the creaminess of the potatoes and the coconut broth and balances out the sweetness from the the coconut sugar as well as the saltiness from the soy sauce and the salt that we added and it creates this perfect balance so make sure you squeeze over a lime or a lemon at the end of your curry right before serving I hope you guys are enjoying this content. I really could use some help and some feedback on what you guys are enjoying the most. If you have a video that you really have liked the most out of all my content so far, just drop it in the comments. Let me know what you really like, whether that's like seeing what's in my pantry or going grocery shopping with me, or maybe you don't like any of that. Maybe you wanna see workouts or you wanna see what my kids are doing. Like, I don't know. Just let me know in the comments below and I will try to make my content to what my audience wants. I am trying to grow my channel. I'm a little over 300 subscribers right now. I'm really trying to get to a thousand by the end of the year. It would be awesome if you guys could help me with that. All you have to do for that is subscribe, hit the bell. That's gonna notify you when I post new videos. This does not cost anything. Creating a YouTube account does not cost anything. It's free. And I highly recommend if you don't already have a YouTube account, 
This is actually something that shocked me. A lot of people don't actually have YouTube accounts, so you can't subscribe till you have that account. It's free to set up your account. And there are so many good content creators out there. If this, if you are trying to start a plant-based journey, or even just trying to incorporate more plant-based meals into your lifestyle, you need a YouTube account because when you have a YouTube account, after you watch my video, it's gonna recommend something else that's similar within my niche. So there are so many good content creators out there and I don't want you guys to miss out on them at all. So anyway, maybe that's a video I'll do. Maybe I'll do like my favorite YouTubers, but you guys have to see, still watch me. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Thanks again. Stay tuned for next Wednesday. Like I said, if you have any requests for next Wednesday, post them below, or any questions about today's recipes, post them below. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me as a stay-at-home mom and plant-based enthusiast, and can't wait to see you next week. Bye. Being hurt, what a concept. Gotta stay alive, yeah, that's the mindset. Caffeine mornings, vodka nights. Gotta be awake, gotta live this life. Hoping there's more, but knowing there's less We gotta keep going and hope for the best Walking the streets, just you and me Trying to fill the void, trying not to bleed Sometimes life just moves too slow You gotta find a reason to push it and go You know we're trying to better